Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Salim Ali, and I'm a licensed insurance agent and a certified repair credit. Uh, this presentation on budgeting is being done at uh, Sagan Public Library, and it's about one o'clock, April 14th. Uh, give me contact info. If you need any help, please feel free to give me a call. There's never a charge, there's never a cost. You know, I will be glad to advise you or review anything that you may have. Before we start, let's. I'd like to thank uh, Sagin Public Library and Mara Mara Bentes for uh, giving us this opportunity, and also like to welcome you and uh, and thank you for joining us. I hope today is to provide you with some valuable information. Have some fun and enjoy the next half an hour. It's going to be a short one today, and we apologize for the technical difficulties we had a little earlier. Also, a big thank you to Mara and again, Sagin Public Library for putting this on for us. The budgeting process, I'm going to um, avoid the technical uh, thing, but I'm going to go to the basic and try to explain to you as much as you can. That the budgeting process is a little complex with the assessment and goal. And, you know, so you start with taking a piece of paper, put everything, your, your goals on the paper. There'll be two columns basically income. And expenses. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at it not from the company point, but I'm looking from the middle middle class and anybody, uh, your individual point of view. So take a piece of paper, just put it down on a piece of paper your goals. What do you want to achieve? Then what is your income every month? How much do you make? Whether it's a paycheck, professional, two paychecks, whatever it is, and then create another column and say expenses. Now on the income side, you don't have much categories out there because it's either 1099 or you know you work for somebody, W2. But on expenses, you will have a lot of uh, categories out there. Housing, rent, communication, I mean, uh, communicating, uh, food, there's a whole bunch of them which you're gonna, gonna own there. But basically, you, what you need is just putting something on a piece of paper, just a small goal. What do you want to achieve with your income? You have X amount of dollars coming in. You have X amount of dollars going out. This is what is left. This is for how you're going to conduct or you're going to get some more goals. You want a new car. You want a better car. You want to go out on a vacation. So those things are your goals. And then we'll try to put that budget and, and get something from your goals too. So the next, please. Now on proper, proper goal setting, let me see. You, you have to be realistic, very realistic, specific. I mean, as realistic as you can, rather than saying, hey, I'll, uh, okay, I only spend 50 bucks on takeout, but you'll be surprised that it may run $250. So be realistic, whatever the figures are, put them on the way it is right now. Be specific, put in the right categories so that you know at the end of the month how much are you spending in within each category. You know, whether it's your food, vacation, clothes. Have a time frame. In other words, if you make a goal, what kind of a, how much is it? You have six months that you want to achieve this, you have a year, you have three months. What do you want to do? And be action oriented. So if you see something which is not right, Try to make the change, but please do not make the change fast. Just go slow so that you get used to it. Because if you to make any fast changes, you're not gonna get adjusted to it. And you're gonna be back to where you are. Next, please. I got all this. Like I said, this income statement, it's, it's, this is too little, but don't worry about it. Normally people don't have a, you would not have an income statement. This is for companies you will have a simple income coming in every year, every month. Next, please. You don't have to worry about the balance sheet. This is also for corporate. All you have to worry about is that income that we were looking at and your expenses. It's simple. Now, this sounds like a lot of work or something confusing, but it is not. You don't need an accountant for it. And there's some, Business friendly tips 
או פיננשל סטבלי. To have a well-informed financial practices for many folks, personal finances range anywhere from a nuisance to do not enter this scary door. It's not that. It's very easy. It's what you put on a piece of paper and what you want out of it. Next, please. Now, there are certain things that you would like to have which are more important to you than possibly other people. Everybody has a different goals, different family matters, different uh, importance, different things. One person is not as the next one. Your family is different. Your occupation may be different. Your, you know, what you do for living, what you do for enjoyment, your health may be different, medical health, and your financial picture may be different. There could be a short-term goals. You can make uh, intermediate goals, or you can make a long-term, six months, five years, three years. You want to buy a car, put it down. Let's, let's look at the next slide. Okay. The money comes, in your case, is probably about the faith paycheck or other income that you may have, or your, if you are a plumber, professional person, whatever, that will come from there. So it will be W-2 or 1099. Those are the two most, most of the income will be coming from. Then you put them down, you put a monthly income, add them up, and that's your income. That's the simple part now. Let's go to the other one. So this is the expenses. That money that you're making, $10,000 a month, $5,000 a month, where is it going? I know if you have a rent or mortgage, you're going to pay that. Uh, now that's your housing categories, like we were talking about, to the categories. Renter insurance or homeowner's insurance, utilities, whether you live or rent. You still have electricity and gas. Internet, cable, and a phone. Everybody has them too. And other housing expenses, like if you have a house, it's probably tax. If you're renting it, hopefully you don't. You know, cleaning, maintenance, there's a whole bunch of issues out there. These all become part of the housing. Now we jump to the next one, our favorite food, groceries and household supplies. You know, just put it down approximately. You can do it up. Oh, excuse me. Uh, so, and then, some days you don't cook, you go out for meals. Then how much does it cost you? Just take it out. I mean, put some realistic out figures that you spend. This is the money that your real expenses. This is not um, 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 budgeted. This is just do this. How much do you really spend? And how much is your income? Once you have three months of expenses out here, then you have a better idea. Hey, my God, I am eating the meals I'm eating out is $300 a month. Hey, I could save that and maybe put in a grocery or do something else. So that, that's your money will be coming in towards the goal and setting aside some figures. Uh, transportation, do you take public transportation, taxes, uh, gas for your car, parking, maintenance, uh, insurance, car loan payment, and any, any other thing. So this is the other categories. Uh, next, please. Next, please. So, so you get an idea just to the income and expenses. And if you think of any of the categories, put them down. If you have other loan payments, if you have student loans, if you have a more, uh, other payments to, you know, your credit card payment, put them all out there. This way you have a good picture of how much is coming in, how close are you to paying out everything. Or is this at the end of the month? Is the month left over or you have the money left over? There are two different kinds of expenses. One is essential, fixed variable. Uh, fixed would be like a rent and uh, the food would be variable because you control that. Uh, fixed, you cannot control it. So fixed would become something like a profit tax. It's, it's, it's part of life. Variable would be like take out enjoyment you know where you go what you do and there's some these are non-essentials could be buying clothes having fun that you could avoid if you don't want to and you can save that money but those are some of the things let's look at the ne next one there next uh, yeah so before you spend the money you have 
choices to make. And it's something that you have to do yourself, not, not really anybody can. That's a kind of a tree, a decent tree. You, can I afford that before you spend the money? Just ask yourself, is it necessary? Or discuss with the spouse. Will it really enhance the quality of my life by doing this, or by checking this, or buying it? Does it fit the values and goals? Or do I need it? Am I going? Am I giving up something more important? In other words, with the same money, you could have done something which could have been more beneficial, but you want to spend on this. So that's going to affect because you only have X amount of dollars to go around. Uh, next, please. The slides are small, so don't worry about this. Like I said, there are a lot of difficult, uh, these are like graphic and all that, and I don't want to get you confused. So we'll move on and I'll speak to the one that really would matter. Uh, next, who should you pay first? If you have X amount of dollars, uh, let's say if you pay your credit cards off, uh, you have a small balance and if you pay it off, you're gonna save money on interest. Should you pay them off rather than paying a minimum 20 bucks? But if your amount is 60 bucks and you can afford it, let's pay it out. This way, you don't have any extra three, four dollars cost next month. Uh, next. Now, this is really, really, I would stress very important. This emergency fund, I call it as a rainy fund too. Rainy days help you out. You know, you should always plan for life unexpected emergencies by setting up an emergency saving fund. Now, there could be two different kinds of uh, savings funds you can create if you want to. For instance, you can have two accounts. One for something is an example, long term, medical, that you don't know when it's going to happen. Nobody knows. Something that will pop up and it may surprise you. The other thing may be something that you have an emergency fund, but you could use it. For instance, if there's a destination wedding and you've been invited to it and you have to go, and if you don't have it, you can take this fund. But to, you have two figures and you know what your uh, limit would be to go out and how much you can spend. This way you're not touching the other one, medical, because if you, God forbid, speak them sick, that's the only money you have. To, to, like, the emergency, and it can happen to anyone, anywhere and anytime, whether you're on a trip, on a cruise or vacation. Sick conservative savings vehicle that keeps pace with inflation. So that we talked about last time too, was the social security was about 5% raised last year, one of the highest ones. And the inflation is coming out eight and a half. So if you got five dollars, you're spending eight and a half dollars. You're still losing out. So your income though is going up, but the purchasing power is coming down. Set aside for at least three to six months worth of expenses to help cope with life emergencies. If you have a family home, car, if car break down, there's a maintenance, air conditioning break down in a home, and you have to replace them, they're expensive. They can be very expensive. And if you don't have an equity or not a good credit, you are stuck. You don't even have a loan. You can't even get a loan for it. Uh, can we go to the next one, please? Now, there's some instruments that you can go into. But if you are just a, uh, if you have an excess money, you can put into stock, bond, pension, mutual funds. But if you are employed and uh, you get a 401k offer from your employer, grab it because in most of the cases, they could pay up to, they match up to five, six, three to five, six percent anyway. And if they match 3% and you have to put 3% for it, that's a, not only a savings for you, but you're getting the other 3% at no cost. It's a free money to you, you know, and you'll be surprised what it can add up to. So 401k, keep an eye. If there's anything that is offered by your uh, group, uh, employer and they contribute to it, a little, even part contribution, grab it. It's a free money, it's a free uh, help to you. Uh, next, please. Uh, this is like I said, I mean, you're not into investment. I'm talking about the from basic side, 
you don't want to get involved or even think about all this confusing thing. Hey, uh, investing, lack of sufficient knowledge and all that. Just go to basic, take a piece of paper, put the goals, put the income, put your expenses, say, hey, how much, what do you want out of life? What do you want to spend? What do you want to eat? How much do you want to save? And just about all is going. Next, please. The next level, once you're done and you're doing it right, three months, let's say two months later, you can rebudget them and say, hey, I'm spending so much money in here. Maybe I can cut down a little bit on this and spend this much on this or put that money into my savings. Now, you should save at least, if not more, maybe about 10% minimum. I would suggest 20% of your paycheck. As every time you get a paycheck, just take 20%, 10%, 5%, 15% and put in your savings account like we were talking about, as if you, did, you didn't get it. And think about it. When was the last time you really did this exercise? You'll be surprised once you start doing it. <clears throat> how do you miss it? Because right now, most of us don't know how much where we spend the money on. Uh, do you have a debt repayment strategy? <clears throat> That's where it will come from, your excess money and everything. Get rid of the debts because they cost you a lot of money. They can cost anywhere from 18 to 30% or maybe more even based on your credit. How much are you putting into savings? Put minimum 10% plus. How much is in your emergency fund? We were just talking about the two funds. Possibly if you can, one for real, real emergency, a surprise emergency, and the other one for other emergencies, like, hey, if you have to make a trip or if you're invited somewhere for a wedding and you need tickets or expenses, there it is. And if you need to, talk to a financial planner, but I don't know if you have to, my, uh, they may be able to help you if you have some funds out there. Um, now, I'm gonna, let's say, I'm gonna briefly concluding. Uh, it's never too late to start learning more and improving your situation. To find out what your expenses is, what your income is. <clears throat> Set a reasonable budget. Don't be realistic, we talk about. Uh, your housing is an example of the total pay room, maybe 25 to 35%, anywhere in that range. Your food, 10 to 15%. Transportation, 10 to 15%. Insurance, 10 to 20%. Utilities, 5 to 10%. But this can vary, depending on how big is the family. The food cost could be more because you have a bigger, a larger family. <clears throat> Budgeting is nothing but a set of personal decisions. Um, you, if you value, as an example, if you value a comf comfortable home, you may set, set aside more for your budget on housing. On the other hand, if you're a single person or, you know, you're more on the outgo, you're on the go a lot, then instead of putting that much in housing, probably you have more budget of money going into travel or nightlife for fun. So pinpoint an area where you want to cut spending, set attainable and incremental goals. More moderate changes is actually more sustainable in the long run. Set up the rainy day fund. We talked about that. And commit to whatever you do. Don't worry. Just commit to whatever you do for a few months. See how it comes out before you make any changes. Be consistent. Financial stability is a long, long, lifelong pursuit with up and ups and downs. And with that, I would conclude this saying, hey, thank you so much for being a part of this, attending it. Uh, again, my thanks to Mara, Pintis, and Sigmund Public Library, and this is my contact information. Feel free to give me a call. Any, any way I can help you, I'll be glad to help you out. Thanks. And I'm signing off. This is Sonimali. Thank you again for attending.